to the Jen's Free YouTube channel with me, Jen. A very warm welcome if you just found the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about colour dance massage, which is sort of what it says on the tin, um, but an amalgamation of lots of different approaches and really great for building self-esteem in your learners as well as body awareness and loads and loads of fun to do as well. So I will put up a bit of a resource list up on the screen now, but I'm going to talk you through ways that you can do it, music that you can use, and then we'll go from there. So okay, let's break this down a little bit. So I'll talk about the colour side of it in a minute, but basically the dance massage part of this comes from a wonderful lady called Naomi Rosenberg. I'd check out her work if you haven't already. She coined the whole idea of dance massage being a thing, and it is basically what it says. And I want to kind of be clear that it's not actually just massaging to music. You know, we can sometimes have those two things as being sort of separate things, whereas actually a dance kind of massage is doing it in rhythm or in beats or in response to the music that you're listening to. So actually, it's a really, really nice sensory experience for your learner, a way of them experiencing music through touch, um, and particularly great for learners who actually maybe couldn't dance in a traditional sort of sense, but actually still want to experience the vibrancy and all of the wonder that music can give us. Now, if you're familiar with story massage, you'll know that there are key actions that make up the story massage program. Um, and I've sort of been inspired a little bit by that with dance massage. Um, so basically, each song has a colour associated with it, which I'll talk about in a minute, and a particular action that goes with it as well. So there's things like squeezing, there's things like tapping, there's rippling with your fingers, there's stroking, um, and each of them is sort of paired with a colour and an emotion to go with it. So I'm going to talk about that side of things and the kind of ways that you can do this with your learners at home or in your class. There's a lot of research out there about colour and emotion and colour theory and all of that and there's a reason why we are attracted to certain colours and why we respond to certain colours and there's a lot of things that kind of come into play when we think about that. So actually there's colour from an evolutionary standpoint so there's a lot of research to back up the idea that actually certain colours evoke certain feelings in us from an evolutionary standpoint so actually certain colours will have warned us against certain things as well as the texture of them and all of that kind of stuff. So our brains are kind of pre-wired towards certain colours anyway. But obviously there's things like cultural um, expectations and all of that kind of stuff as well. So, you know, red in certain cultures might be different to other cultures and vice versa. So there's that kind of side of it as well. And also we've got to consider things like personal experience. So actually your own view of colour and what you like and what you don't like, as well as the textures associated with colour, are going to form how you view that colour and the kind of emotions that you might consider to be paired with that colour as well. I've used colour a lot in music before, so when we've done sort of timbre and talked about the feel of music, it's been a really, really nice way of communicating that idea to children and learners. So that's a really great way of doing it. And that's essentially what we're doing here. We're partnering so many things together. So we're putting emotion in it, dance and kind of movement in it and colour all together. So actually it's a bit of a kind of an amalgamation of lots of different things, but actually the reason that I wanted to do that is to provide another form of communication because actually if our non-verbal learners actually want to communicate how they're feeling about something, then providing them with colour as another angle seems to me a great way to do that. So that's another reason why I'm doing this really. Okay, so what I normally do is go back onto good old fashioned PowerPoint. No PowerPoint gets a lot of stick for being a little bit outdated, but I love it and I will never knock it because it's amazing. So what I would highly recommend you do is just put the colors onto a PowerPoint. Nothing else, just the colors, that's fine. If you want to then go on and write the action that you need for that particular color, you can do. Um, but what I tend to do is just flood the screen so you've got your whiteboard if you're using this as a class teacher, just filled with that color. So actually when you're doing these massages with your children and following along, they've got that colour kind of flooding the whole of their vision. Now if you've got a light as well, that's even better because then you can make the whole room red, or the whole room yellow, or the whole room green, and actually then you're really, really starting to get that partnership of music, emotion and colour together. 
And then all we do is partner everything up. So I will probably start with a warm up so your learners are used to the feel of you touching them and you're getting that body awareness and proprioceptive stuff going. Um, so I usually start with sort of squeeze action um, and it's just a really, really nice sort of slow squeeze and release compression therapy kind of stuff. Um, and that seems to kind of get learners in the right frame of mind for that. So I'm just gonna go through each color what the action is, what the emotion is, and what song I use. As I say, this isn't set in stone, it's what I use and a good starting point. So red is my angry one, and we do a sort of angry clawed action to that on the skin. And the song that I use is Super Massive Black Hole by Muse, and that's gone down really, really well. So um, yeah, it's a nice one to kind of get facial expressions going and talk about angry feelings. Again, flood the visual field with red um, and go with it. Yellow is obviously my happy colour. I use Happy by Pharrell, it's a given. Um, it's got a great beat to it as well and I tend to just do a tapping action for that. There is a kind of like clapping bit in it that I tend to kind of do it quite quickly so it really echoes the music um, and then you get a contrast in communicational responses as well as the children start to recognise that part of the song um, and then you get those lovely, lovely anticipation skills after that as well. So that's a really good one for yellow. Green I tend to see as a calming kind of colour and I use my wiggly fingers for that one and I use Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles um, just I think because it reminds me of like grass growing and summer and stuff so yeah that's the wiggly finger green one. So blue is my sad one and I use the saddest piece of music that I can think of which is Adagio for Strings by Barber. Now be aware there is a dance version of this please don't use the dance version it really won't won't be good and it will just build up and you'll get this weird trance version at the end of it um, so make sure it is just the original uh, Adagio for strings. I tend to use the think the London Philharmonic Orchestra one, um, but it is really, really super sad um, and just it has a really, really calming, mellow vibe to it. And it's really interesting to see the communication responses between that and say the Pharrell track. It's really, really interesting to note that. And the action for it is just a sort of really calm, soft stroking action. Now, if you've partnered children up for this or your learners are doing it to each other, which is actually quite a nice thing to do, it's nice to be able to isolate fingers for that as a sort of fine motor exercise as well and kind of be able to do it with that finger then that finger then that finger as well so that's an added kind of fine motor angle to that part of it and then i finish off with excited and i tend to use hot pink for that and a sort of snapping action so sort of castanets um, and i make sure that it's quite fast again to create a bit of contrast between that and the blue that's come before it um, the song that i use for this is really randomly called Mr. Samba um, it's by a band called Bellini band I don't even know if they are a band actually but it's a real kind of samba holiday feel to it so do check that one out and then to finish in a similar way to Tack Pack I try and get the learners to communicate what their favourite action was um, and then I just repeat that and the song that I tend to use for the end is just a really really chilled mellow one by one of my favourite bands um, they're called Moonchild I really really recommend you check them out if you just want something chilled on in the background at any point they're just lovely um, and the song that I use is called The Other Side so The Other Side by Moonchild just is a really nice one to finish the session I will put all of those on at the end of the video on a big long list so you can pause it or take a screenshot and just jot it all down if you want to. As I say, feel free to use your own tracks if you've got ones that you think would work better or you want to theme it in a particular way, um, do do that. But actually this is a really nice starting point to kind of get you used to doing colour dance massage. The last thing I would say about this is consistency and actually if you're looking to build up those communicational responses, use the same songs each time because that's going to build up your anticipation skills and your learners that sense of regularity that sense of familiarity as well and you're going to get all of those lovely communication exchanges so don't be too quick to change the music over okay so I will put up my version of it up on the screen now and enjoy please do let me know if you use it and if it's successful this is a definite tried and tested one as well so I hope you really really enjoy it
So yeah, have fun with it. Like it down at the bottom. Please subscribe to the channel and share this around with any teachers or practitioners or parents that you think would benefit. That would really be great. I'll see you next Saturday for another video. We'll be doing a sensory make, I think, for that one. So stay tuned for that. And have a lovely weekend and a lovely rest of your week. Okay, everybody, take care. Bye.